Welcome to this short video on SLA Portal. During the next few minutes, we'll look at who are the intended users, then we'll provide an overview of the solution features and architecture. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the tool so you can get an idea of the look and feel. SLA Portal is a professional services productized offering. It is sold as a subscription service and our customers are service providers. Ultimately, they use the tool as a subscriber portal where their end users can log on and visualize the performance of the services they buy as well as monitor adherence to the service level agreements. It's similar to how you may log on to your internet service provider portal to view your consumption. Typical end users we have seen so far are enterprises and local public services and agencies. So how is it offered? It's a completely white-labeled solution that can be entirely tailored to fit the needs of the service provider, from logos to dashboard content and banners. It can be deployed as a standalone portal or integrated within the provider infrastructure with single sign-on. The portal is completely customizable, including URL, visual identity, and reports content and format. Now, what does the architecture look like? At the core of SLA Portal is Sienna's Cloud Communication Engine, or C3E. C3E is installed on the ESM or One Control server and pulls relevant performance metrics from Sienna's devices. The data is aggregated and pushed out to the cloud analytics infrastructure. Every subscriber or end user has access to their own data via the white-labeled portal. Custom data pollers and aggregators may be developed to adapt C3E to third-party equipment. Now let's take a look at the solution. This is the landing page for the end users of a fictitious company named Vectors.com. The page shows the main dashboard. You'll notice that the portal is completely customizable from the service URL to the company logo. Here we have different services the customer can select and also the different time intervals they have available. We can look at the reports for the last two months, for example. As we scroll down, we can see service performance like throughput, the 1731 delay, jitter on each of the services. Further below, we have the service violations as they occur across the day of the month or hour of the day. And finally, we have SLA trends. All of this information can be seen at a per service level or a group of services or the entire network if you want to. So we can aggregate any way you want to look at it. It is also possible to change the chart types. For example, you can change this line graph to an area graph if you prefer. You can also drill down and look at the data in a more granular fashion. For example, it is possible to look at a per instance value that was collected from the device. All this information can be very quickly exported out to a PDF report that can be saved or emailed directly from the portal. The email can be scheduled on a monthly or weekly basis and the repeat feature allows you to send a regular report to your end users. This was the end user view of the portal. Now, let's take a look at the backend portal administrator view of things and see how easy it is to configure. This is one of the graphs we were looking at. This is the frame delay chart. Let's make a copy of it so we can update that chart. We go in edit mode so we can modify this copy. This is done directly on the portal using a web browser. Here, we're selecting a min, max, and average for this metric as opposed to the average we were showing before. There we go, back to view mode. And this is what the new data looks like with min, max, and average. If we want to look at the data in a different way, 
I want to look at it and say an area graph. This looks good. I like it. I save it. But just saving it does not help. I need to add it to my dashboard, the home dashboard, the one that was the landing page for my end users. This is the one we were looking at before. This was our landing dashboard. Let me go in edit mode and let's go down to our frame delay graph and drag and drop the frame delay chart we just created. We just drop it over here and do a save. As soon as we do a save, we can go back to our original view, which is the original landing page for our users. We go down here and there we go. This is the new chart that we just put together. We basically added min, max, and average for the frame delay. And as you can see, within less than a minute, you're able to create these charts and customize them exactly the way you want to. In conclusion, please remember a few points about the SLA portal. It enables service visualization by the end users. It fits into an existing portal infrastructure. It is highly customizable and dynamic. And it is deployed very rapidly as a subscription offering. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out for a demo or a deeper dive. Thank you.